What is up guys, and we doubles back again with a brand new video, and today I've got episode 2 of my new world journey is finally out, and the goals have been met. So I hope you guys are ready for some more PvP progression. Let's jump right in. Okay guys, it is episode 2. We are ready to play level 26 Hatchet Spear. I've gone ahead and actually removed the Berserk ability in exchange for a pretty interesting one. I'll go ahead and show it to you guys now. So this is what I'm using with the Hatchet. I have Rending Throw, Social Distancing, and Infected Throw. Now the way this works is that each of my throwing abilities give a debuff to my target. The Rending Throw reduces my target's damage absorption, the Social Distancing slows my target, and makes me go faster with the quick power talent and the infected throw weakens my target which is basically a way to reduce the healing they take and also reduces their damage by another 10 percent now on top of that my rend ability my rending throw rather is going to be increased if i'm throwing it from farther than eight meters uh, it's also going to do more damage if i've used one of my other two abilities first before i use my rending throw that's pretty easy and then rending throw on a target with an active debuff also reduces the ability cool down by 20%. So that's kind of what we've got going for us. So we have rending throw, we have social distancing, and then we have infected throw, right? So that's what we're going to be using with the hatchet uh, with this particular episode. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some questing. I've made it to Brightwood. I've got some PvP quests in teal. I've got some call board quests in yellow and some side stories and stuff as well. Uh, we're just going to see what we can do. Now, one of the goals of this video is... 150 logging so i'm going to be cutting down a lot of weird wood trees as well and we'll be able to nail that and get to the iron wood level uh, and that's going to be pretty fun now the max level is 200 and apparently it does take a very long time to max a refining or crafting skill in new world not to the same degree as runescape right because that literally takes months of your life away for some reason uh but still far more than it would be in world of warcraft so in other words there is still a little bit of an aura of prestige about getting certain crafting skills to max partly because most people simply won't have all of these skills very high in fact most people will only probably have one or two of these things currently like i do very high but our goal is to eventually get all of these very high and also to max them out so that is the goal Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and start questing, see who we find along the way, and uh, just start progressing on the character. Okay, so I'm questing right now, as I said, and so far I've found quite a few very, very good pieces. In fact, most of the creatures I've been tasked with fighting in Brightwood have been on the higher end of the level bracket. I mean, I believe it says, you can barely see it, 26 to 35 right there. Um, over here it said this was a level 21 quest, but everything was, as you can see, based on Brightwood Isle, what it literally says, uh, level 35 and even required five people so that's weird that it says level 21 anyway going on up uh most of the creatures up here 28 29 i'm 26 and even over here i'm currently at this place fighting 33s so what i like is that they're not babying me okay it's a uh, do or die and i have all the freedom in the world to choose where i go this might be a 33 and it might be kind of difficult compared to what i normally fight there we go but i can still choose to do it Oops. Oh my god, are you kidding? It's just embarrassing. I really love the hatchet, man. Okay, let's end this. I'm so sorry for that. Commentating is kind of difficult in action games, right? It's a lot easier in WoW when I just click something and I just press keybinds. I have to do the same stuff in this game that I do in WoW, except I have to aim with my mouse as well. Anyway, as I was saying, everything's pretty high level, but I've gotten pretty good gear so far. Pretty nice haul, by the way. Double officer's hat of the fighter, and of the fighter seems pretty good. Strength and dex, that's stuff that people would use quite often. In fact, I was using the better of these two, this one right here, before I got my cloth robe hat of the night. Now, you might be wondering why it matters outside of the fact that they're blue but they're both light headwear which is very good for pvp because it gives you the long roll which i've gone back to by the way i've gone full light armor on purpose intentionally right to get this long roll i also went ahead and leveled up my uh trade skills up a bit logging's at 103 so i did some more of the weird wood but here's the thing to keep in mind i can't actually work it into lumber right now because i don't know if we have a tier 4 woodworking station anywhere on the map could be wrong i've asked in global chat but it wasn't in cutlass it wasn't 
wasn't an Everfall or Windsward, um, so I can check all the other places, but that's very interesting. The way these things get upgraded is by doing call board quests in all of the cities, and so it really is a server-driven thing. It could just be that we don't have one yet, or I haven't looked in the right place yet. We'll have to figure it out in a second, but I find that interesting that I possibly have a skill so high that we haven't even developed the stuff to work the skill yet because nobody's quite there yet, right? Well, at least they didn't call it Duskwood. If you know the lore from WoW, Duskwood was also called Brightwood, I'm pretty sure, and then it looked like shit, and that's why they called it Duskwood. This one's called Brightwood, but it's pretty damn dark. Everything in here wants to kill me, and it's just full of ghosts and ghouls and demons. Uh, but it still looks bright, interestingly enough, in the places where those guys aren't, so at least the name actually makes sense. Uh, you know, I kind of like it. It looks a bit different from uh, Everfall, although it is directly connected to Everfall, so it makes sense that it would look similar. I'm seeing seeing more straight trees. I'm um, seeing more trees with no leaves on them, but it is very similar. I'm not going to lie. I like playing in biomes that look like this, and that's why I'm uh, kind of prioritizing it, so to speak, because I could easily go to Cutlass Keys, which is going to look completely different. It's going to be like uh, an islandy kind of biome, uh, but you know what? I'm, I'm a big fan of fall time, right? I think uh, a lot of you will agree with me. Fall time is probably the best season, hands down, but so far, it just feels like everything in Brightwood is trying to kill me. So yeah, the name is kind of like Greenland. You know how the Vikings went there and they found it and it looked like shit, but they didn't want people to go to Iceland anymore, and that's also why they named it Iceland. So they just said, yes, call it Greenland, right? And then everybody will move to Greenland. And then people moved there, and oh my god, imagine the shitstorm when people got off the boat, right? That's how I feel right now, coming into Brightwood, uh, ever so slightly. I mean, as soon as you get into the house, you don't think you're in Brightwood anymore, right? So the aesthetic's been done nicely here. But yeah, everything is definitely trying to murder me, and I have died quite a few times like look at that this is brightwood see one thing i've noticed about this game is that yeah okay the zone might look a certain way but they have no issue completely changing the ambience when you enter a new area of the zone and i'm talking one baby town right one little spot and they've decided to do all that right to make it look haunted not just put haunted shit in there but to make it look haunted now don't get me wrong there is something genuinely ominous and uh, genuinely scary about a place that is otherwise calm but actually is full of shit that wants to kill you i do fully recognize that but can we acknowledge for a second for mmos in this regard that for the most part you don't get a lot of sad and scary anymore you get mostly happy and then we'll put some scary stuff in the middle of the happy but the scary stuff is also probably cartoony and you know you'd have to be like eight to maybe uh be scared of it look at this it all got dark they don't care about uh saving your feelings in this regard in the case of making things dark and dreary in the case of making things be scary and even jump scary to a certain degree i'm gonna uh, look i'm just gonna block it so we can see what is this jesus man imagine having headphones on and hearing the shriek and by the way these things freaking hunt you not this mob in particular but like new world mobs in general genuinely genuinely difficult i'll say that i've said it before with the dungeons there we go it's dead oh nope jesus but i've said it before with the dungeons but the fact of the matter is they're trying to make you think and i, I i'm sorry but i crave that so much in my multiplayer games nowadays see see it outplayed me you can't pretend that didn't outplay me because it literally did Okay, it thought about what I did, which is just kind of interesting. They've uh, coded it to where it'll actually go out of its way to dodge your stuff. Where if it does dodge your stuff, it will capitalize on it. I've watched these mobs, by the way, go for stronger players and outplay the shit out of them and kill them, you know? And it's just, it's just interesting because a lot of the times playing these games today, you actually wonder for a second, is it just not possible yet? Are we just not far enough technologically yet to program AI that is actually hard? A lot of you guys are skeptical, and that's why I want to have these talks, right, in these videos from time to time, and just give my opinion, because I'm right there with you, okay? Uh, I don't think any of the MMOs that have come out after WoW have been worth anybody's time. That even goes for bigger things, by the way, like uh, Final Fantasy XIV, and things that I wanted to be good really badly, but ultimately I just didn't think were the best, or didn't live up to their potential, like Elder Scrolls Online. New World has the bones. Bones, I know, it's just bones, it needs meat. But it has the bones of a really good MMO. I understand y'all's sentiment, right? I understand. 
that a lot of you guys are looking at top streamers and you're seeing the streaming culture and the extreme cringe, I think, that, uh, personally, I think, that encompasses it, where you have all these guys, right, and they're freaking wearing their headphones, man, and they've got all their gaming stuff in the back and all their gaming memorabilia, and they've got, oh, and they're so ready, right, it's not, it's not about the donations or the money, except they're gonna flash it on their screen and they're, you know, they're gonna, like, talk to you like a cam girl, right, and they cannot wait to get your money, and then while all of this stuff is happening, they're just going to quit the game in a week, and I can't even watch it, like, I think some of you guys, because I know my audience is older, 25 to 34 is the majority, of you and I know you guys remember a time when twitch was good right like when professional was not normal when the people who became professionals uh, were actually incredibly popular and good uh, not just this weird mainstream popularity you know where are the people in their bedrooms just like streaming man and they become big where's like Raynad from hearthstone who became big look at this shit I'm capping it and this dude he just refuses look you can roll on the ground Nobody told me you could do that! I don't know, this guy could be Major Big Dick and I'm just fucked. Like, he's missing every shot though. <laughs> oh, it's just great. Oh god, okay. I think he's just like a scout for the actual people on their team. I'm, I want him to jump. Oh, he got me. <laughs> Come on! Get me! Oh no! Oh god! I'm rolling too late. Oh! <laughs> Come on, buddy! Oh! Oh! <laughs> I tricked you! you oh no! Oh god! <laughs> No! Oh, 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 yes! Oh my god, he must hate his life, dude. Got him. I can land it sometimes, my friend. Not every time, though. <laughs> oh, I'm off the point? No, I'm on it. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> oh my god, that doesn't get old. He's gonna jump down when it comes to the point in which I'm just gonna cap it. And he's gonna look like a- yeah, he's already getting there. Alright, got him. Bleed. Uh oh. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Thanks for the hatchet mastery and thanks for the farmer gloves of the soldier. Yeah, I'll take it. Alright, but anyway, pretty good. Pretty good. That went better than I thought it was going to go, because he uh, started running from me. Number one, I was pretty confident I couldn't catch him. <laughs> I don't have my Berserk anymore with this version of the build. But number two, he was pretty confident with that turnaround, so I was a little iffy. But when I got two very easy dodges off, I was pretty confident as well. Okay, I got a hatchet level up actually with that kill. And I'm so sorry for this music in the background, but I'm in a spooky place right now. But uh, yeah, persistent hindrance is something I can now get. Successful throwing axe hits extend all hatchet debuff durations by 30%, meaning my slow and uh, my reducing of the target's damage by now, uh, it looks like 10%, absorption by 10%, and also healing reduced by 30%. All of that is permanent if I can keep landing hits. That's really, really strong. And so, yeah, we're all the way at the very end of the tree, finally, with throwing axes. And it's probably the most fun, I said it in the last video, it is, that I've had with any New World weapon. I'll take 30 harvesting. We didn't get it in open beta. We finally got it day three of launch. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotta be fucking kidding me! How does this shit keep happening? I'm like the fucking unluckiest human. Wow, I just realized where all of the herbs were. Like, all of it. I'm finding so much hemp now and just regular herbs. It's just great. Turns out it was in first light. Not Windsward, not Everfall, but first light. Okay, guys, I'm gonna end the night by showing you guys my house. I've made some upgrades to it, right? Still love the location. I've got some drawers now. I've got a bunch of, uh, you know, just things to, uh, fill in the space. Bookshelves, armoires, bunch of shelves, right? We gotta get things to put on these shelves. You can see them by my bed as well. Shelf on top of shelf, right? On top of this little, like, bookcase type of thing right here. So a shelf on top of that. My stove's right there. And we've got, like, a, a placemat and a cup right here. Still staring at the fire. That's all we do. And, of course, we have the dogs outside, right? So this is what I've got. This is my little starter house. 
And I've also started using a sword and shield. Uh, you know, there are three different types of shields, the little round shields, also kite shields and tower shields. And now the bigger the shield, obviously the more it weighs and the round shield is the smallest of the three. So actually, currently with my setup, I've still got a light equip load. So I can still roll the whole way. You can see right here, while wearing light armor, your dodge is a quick roll that covers a lot of distance. You deal 20% bonus damage and healing. So I'm going to have more damage and I'm thinking I'll have a lot more mobility with abilities like this as well as this reverse slash which covers a little bit of extra distance and of course we have this little whirlwindy ability as well it's just been fun it's a deck strength weapon which is the same as my spear which we're also still using except i'm going to experiment with using it as a zoner in the zoner tree with things like this with stuns like that and with bleeds like this of course as well so yeah that was just a very quick very basic rundown of what i'm doing and this is my house and on our way to getting 150 logging which is going to take a second right because the wormwood trees are uh well let me just put it like this multiple times when i went to our spot there were people there by bear claw pass and i had other spots and there are people there as well and so the best spots are in high level zones where everything one shots me so it's going to be a journey and i know that on the way there we're gonna have to make a lot more progress as well because i've got to do other things there are certain crafting skills i haven't even touched yet jewel crafting and fishing and i've got to start touching some of this stuff uh so yeah lots of stuff still yet to do and that's probably the most exciting part guys all right here's a guy look at that oh yeah nice rank six sword and shield Ooh, what did i get fire staff of the occultist i'll take it I love that you get loot. They removed loot drop, but they added loot to killing players. That's such a solid middle ground. As long as that loot can essentially be good sometimes, then uh, like I'm talking like maybe occasionally getting a rare drop, or maybe if you're super lucky and maybe at higher levels like an epic, I think that is awesome. But as a low level, even getting a green just feels good. Okay, here's a guy. I actually have food this time. Nice, dodged right through that. Oh. Oh my god, the ice tomb. Poison? Yes. Come on out. Uh-oh. Look at all my freaking mobility, man. It must be so annoying to have to play against me. Got her with the poison. Oh, we both tried to get each other there. No, don't help me, musket boy. Eh, it didn't matter anyway, let's be honest. There we go. I got those last hits, man. That's what mattered. He got a musket shot. I finished her, man. That's mine. I can't really... F I just missed that. I can't really fault them for helping me. We're like the only greens in the area. Gotta stick together, you know? I'm just kind of looting, you know? That's what I'm doing. I'm killing things and looting and just... Yeah, I'm waiting for some uh, cooldowns actually to come back up. And then I think what I'm going to do... I'm talking literally about my recall and my go back to my house. Like, that's what I need. And I'm also farming Azoth. The game kind of encourages you to go zone to zone to zone. You know, it's not like you can go... You know, Brightwood says 26 to 35. You're not leveling solely in Brightwood 26 to 35, right? Unless you take a really long time to do it and do a bunch of PvP quests and stuff. Now... I was looking more at the sword and shield tree and it's actually pretty fascinating. Precision just gives me 10% crit and I can end up going to things like Achilles heel to make it where the final attack in my light attack chain, which by the way is incredibly fast, right? And AOE, uh, well, you know, circular, which is pretty freaking nice. But what it says is that it slows the target for 20%. So that's really good. I can also end up getting stuff like opportunist to deal 10% more damage to slowed foes. So after that first light attack chain, I do more damage. I have 10% more crit. I can end up getting more damage when I use opportunity uh, off the whirling blade. I can end up slowing people again if they're not facing me, if I hit them in the back uh, with the leap that I have, if I get cowardly punishment. And by the way, I just get a flat 10% damage buff as my my, like last talent like <laughs> that's pretty good i love the concept right now i'm basically just doing as many of these town board quests as i can possibly do so that's two more right there hunting rabbits and uh stone blocks one thing i like about this is that it gets me out doing my crafting skills one thing i really really want to do is just be as uh generally good and equal in all of my skills as possible i could care less about my combat level what i care about is having all of these skills at a fairly equal amount I think my current goal after I get 150 logging, which is a bit of an undertaking I've now learned, uh, is going to be to get 100 with every single skill. At that point, I'll be extremely satisfied and I'll start focusing more on my combat level, my overall.
overall level. So the house actually looks pretty good in the daytime, guys. Not gonna lie. I really like it. I wish you could interact with stuff more. You know, just simple things sometimes would be nice, like uh, sitting in this chair, for example. But it's fine, because I feel like that's always something they could add in the future, right? I'm gonna tilt this just a little bit. You know, make it a little realistic, right? We use it. We actually use it sometimes, okay? Maybe if at night the fire was brighter, that'd be nice. Also, is my mantle, like, uneven? I can't wait to put stuff on it right? Like, that's gonna be really fun. Also, another thing, like, let me shut my door. It's cool that I can see the players outside. That's a really sick thing, uh, but let me shut my door, right? <laughs> like, let me shut this one. The more player control you give over their house, the better. I'm sure stuff like that will be added in the future, but yeah, those are just some things I'd like to see with the player-owned house so far. Just being able to interact with stuff more. It's coming soon, my friend. It's a brand new day. I just put out the Craig video, and this is a comment I just got. Um, you know, I just got to get 150 logging. I logged out literally in my special spot, the Bear Claw Shrine, which has two little trees here and a bunch more down here. And uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a grind right? Because I could grind out normal trees and stuff, and I might actually have to do that. The mature trees, rather, uh, something like this, but it, it's going to be a grind. Man, nothing feels better than making my rounds, and I just see that little hint of blue in the trees. Wait, there's a little circle on top of that thing right there. But anyway, this little blue, it really gets me going, man. Like, you gotta admit, it's a beautiful ass tree. <laughs> like, it's just a beautiful looking tree. And, and you know what? That's what it takes sometimes, right? To make somebody want to do it. Not many people think, I'm going to log on to my video game today and pretend I'm cutting wood, but I do, right? And you know why? Because of things like the weird wood tree, right? It entices me. It draws me to it. I enjoy it. Um, and a lot of it's just because it looks cool. Hopefully the iron wood tree doesn't disappoint. I'm actually curious because you can just see, right? Uh, if we go to logging, you can click on it like RuneScape. So iron wood gathered at 175, not even 150. Shoot. Okay. Tracked it max. Jesus. Uh, it looks like it's ironish looking. Um... I'm getting like a, an orange vibe right there. I mean, the weird wood tree doesn't look as cool in this picture either compared to what it looks like in like real life, lol. Uh, actually in game rather. So who knows, the iron wood trees could be really badass. Still haven't found, by the way, a woodworking station tier four, and that's what I need. So if I click the cities, it tells me what everybody's built. So the wood shop tier three down here in first light, that's pretty damn close. Cotlass has a tier two, Windsward tier two. It's like my, my own faction doesn't even care about me, man. It's like, why should I even bother? That's why I play in Everfall. All right, what about Monarch's Bluff and why can't, oh, it's right here. It's right there. Tier two, Jesus. Everfall tier two, of course. Brightwood tier two. Actually, the best one is in my faction. It's at first light. Uh, tier 2 over here in Reekwater, Tier 2 there. I don't think I'm going to get higher than Tier 2. It's like nobody gives a shit about woodworking. But the fact of the matter is if you want some of the better, uh, let's say, furnishing items, you're going to need a good woodworker. You're going to need somebody that can cut this crap down and, and that uh, actually leveled all the stuff up. So I'm prepping, you know. They're going to care about it soon. Just you wait. Just you wait. And guess what? I'll be the last one laughing. Now, this was actually a nice little segue to something else I wanted to talk about. That is the death of this cougar with the axe in his head. Um, I actually realized, and somebody in the comment section of my last New World video let me know as well, but I had already figured it out by then, but I do want to point it out that I'm not the only one that has uh, figured it out. Uh, but this general area is actually really good for iron farming. I found some silver along the way. Haven't found gold or anything like that, but I've definitely found a lot of iron, like one thing of silver one time. And of course, if I... Uh, kill anything along the way like cougars and stuff i'm getting some weapon mastery now i'm a little disappointed with myself i can't skin this i need 25 skinning it's pathetic that i can't so i should probably get that and i think i will after i cut down these weird wood trees because they have a really long spawn so it's not like i'm just gonna have to sit here and they're gonna reappear in 30 seconds it's like five or ten minutes dude one thing i could really use is more inventory space but people know that uh the creation of bags and the acquisition of bags is a really big deal so those are like six to a thousand gold on the auction house and they're not even that good um I think I'm going to have to make my own. The best place I've learned to farm linen, first of all, if you're in Everfall or Windsward, see, I'm encumbered, uh, good luck finding hemp, right? But if you're in First Light, it's like a dime a dozen. Like, you literally have a hard time not finding it. Uh, and that's where I need to go if I want to level up and, and get my bag, create my own bags, rather. Right, I'm just going to get rid of this uh, aged wood, I guess. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect. All right, I'm going to go back to the Bear Claw Shrine, um, get rid of some of this wood. I don't think I have any space in Everfall, so... Actually, I could probably just hearthstone right now. We can put it in Brightwood. Okay, so I'm in first light. I just wanted to show I literally am right next to Cape Thomas Beach Shrine. And immediately, the first thing I see is hemp and herbs. Immediately, right? And a lot. 
I'm gonna go ahead and level harvesting and kill some creatures around here and level my skinning. Just take a quick break from logging 45 harvesting, by the way. I wanna make sure I'm up to date. You know, having below 25 skinning is kind of unacceptable in my opinion. So like there's some kind of creature over there, I think. Lynx, I hope I can skin this, man. Jesus Christ. All right, I gotta find some lower level stuff. It won't be that bad. Like I just have to find a wolf den or something. They're literally everywhere. Just obviously not in first light, damn it. See, literally so much of it, it's actually unbelievable. <laughs> What is this? This is a massive thing of hemp right here, right next to the shrine. Anything next to a shrine is going to be amazing. That's what I've basically figured out. I think that's common sense. If it's next to a shrine, you can port to it very simply, port back to town very easily, and get everything you need to get. That's why I think, even though it looks like this weird wood tree stuff over here is out of the way, it's really not, because the Bear Claw Shrine is right there. So my goal right now is 50 harvesting, and uh, then I'm just gonna power level my mining up to 50, my skinning up to 50, just everything up to 50 if I can, because 50 seems to be a kind of magic number for a lot of things I can't get. Okay, so by the way, 50 harvesting, that's quite good. Still working on everything else i'm moving up here to uh howl tower hollow some places where there's a lot of mines here so that's where i'm going uh but look at this a corrupted shrine thingy um these are kind of like i don't know how to call it like an eso type of uh daedric attack on the map or uh like a rift from rift or something except it's not obviously quite the same at all based on what you're seeing uh but yeah i just found one. Oh. so you fight these elite guys and i think you get some pretty good loot you can see I take no damage when I block, dude. It's an interesting thing, right? Wait, is it done? Oh, yes. Look at all these purples completing it for me. What do I get for it? A minor breach cache. I did nothing. Okay, I'm just curious. That was so free. Like, what do I get for that? Hatchet of the Soldier. Is it better than what I have? I just got this Forsaken Hatchet of the Cavalier, which is just like crazy good for me. Five strength, 10 dex, empty socket. Could do it. Has life stealing on it. 1% uh, of my damage is health. But hey, you know, that's better than 0%. So this isn't better. It does have an interesting thing called Mortal Siphoning on it. It's also 15 strength, which is really good. But I scale off both, so it's not that deep. I'm just going to get rid of it. There's another one of those right here, Festering Hive. So uh, I need an Azoth Staff Tier 1 to do it, which you get... Uh, well, I already got. You saw me get it in the last episode. It's what let me do the Amrine Excavation. What does it require to skin a bison? I think I could do it. All right, here's a bison. Let's try. Here's another one. Okay, Straight Sword Mastery. 25! Oh my god, I'm so far behind right now. You can see there's like the occasional hemp in places like uh, Windsward, but uh, it's nothing near what it was like in First Light. Like, I would not just find one, I would find seven. <laughs> okay, just bunched up and ready to go. And that's just better, man, in every single way. See, there's another lone hemp just doing its own thing. I wonder what that red one is, and I wonder if I can get it now that I'm 50. You find a lot of stuff that requires, like, max level shit almost, and it's like, this is probably it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Wire fiber, 175. Check it out. Finally gonna benefit from 50 harvesting, because I know I couldn't get this before. I don't know if it's 50 or 30, but dragon glory. Uh, let's see what I get. Dragon glory stem and fire moat. Okay, so this is a good way to farm fire moats, and I don't know if they're gonna sell for anything. Some of the moats are more expensive than others, but it's definitely worth a try try might want to just keep it actually depends another eight off that one this is a scorch stone that's what i need 50 mining for man i hate that i have to leave it there i'm so close all right i'm here and so far it's been pretty good i've got iron vein i can skin everything i see here to get to 25 come on come on come on come on there we go <laughs> jesus and as you can see everything's pretty easy to kill as well no way there's weird wood trees here too on the divine rise so it looks like this general area is just amazing for my skinning and my harvesting, believe it or not. I got a lot of soul sprouts here and my wood cutting and my mining. Look at that. How lucky is that? There's four of them, man. That is as lucky as it comes. See, this general area has had a bunch of earth spine and I mentioned soul sprout before as well. And this is the same kind of stuff like the fire stuff I found earlier that's giving me moats. And I'm basically high enough to where I don't ever have to worry about competition. Like nobody basically has 100 logging. There probably are some people but remember it's server based it's not like people from another server are just gonna phase in here and take my weird wood tree i'm basically one of a handful of individuals that can actually cut this right now don't get me wrong i've seen other people but barely like almost never yeah there we go 25 skinning small prey can now be tracked 
52 harvesting, four more levels for mining, so we're basically where we want to be. In terms of being able to skin the lynxes near my one good spot back at Bear Claw Pass. Honey comes from trees like that. Looks like it's been looted though, so I'm just looking for the entryway to this cave. There it is. What do we got? I can also loot everything. Looks like somebody just mined whatever was here, sadly. But I got a supply cache. I'll take that. I might be able to make my rounds all the way to Craw Tick Cave, where I know there's a lot of iron in that general area. And then when everything is gone, I just make my way back. All right, got some river crest right here. It looks like it actually pops up on your map when you can track things if you're near them. So that's pretty good. Now, if only I could like click it to make it stay, you know, so you still have to go find it yourself, but then eventually your map would just be littered with like resources you found and maybe give me a toggable option to like get rid of that if I don't want to see it. I think that would work really, really nicely. So with that last PvP fight, you saw I changed one of my abilities over. I felt like the uh, Whirling Blade just wasn't doing it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and try Shield Rush, which uh, stuns my target, essentially knocking them back and does some damage as well. It's a little bit of a baby gap closer. So now all of my abilities put me forward at least a little bit. And I just felt like it was working better because we didn't really have a lot of ways to uh, lock a target down. And some more updates to the house. I apparently got this like pot and pan type of thing while questing. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, in front of the fire. And we have like a a little rug under this uh <laughs> under our little eating area so that's pretty cool the house is actually coming together quite nicely so far and there we go guys 29 weaving just like that so much hemp and so many fibers as a result uh from first light that's pretty good. So apparently at the outfitting station, I can craft silver stuff. Silver hook for an earring, silver band for a ring, silver setting for a gemstone. I'm actually incredibly enticed right now. I, I, I don't, I don't know. What if I do one band? Only 15 jewel crafting XP. It's like nothing. Okay, but then we do one silver setting. 12. Okay, now what? Okay, so you can craft amulets and stuff. Looks like I can't make rings, but again, the amulet is a real thing that I could do. I don't have any of the stuff I need to make any of these or else I would real quick. I was looking for a bag, coarse leather bag. I need iron ingots and I can make this and a minor rune of holding, which is derived from the faction shop. So I can easily buy that. I really should make this happen. Jesus Christ, we need 250 gold for a minor rune of holding. That's, ex that's an expensive bag. Okay, I guess we'll have to come back for that. I just spent all my money. This is easily my favorite daily. The one where I have to go search for chests at Bear Claw Pass. I mean, then I can grab everything I need to grab. It's just, it's just the best of both worlds, man. I'm going to go there now, hopefully collect more Azoth, get more skill ups, and I'll see you guys in a bit when I make some more progress. And look, there's herbs right outside, right outside Everfall. That's so good. Okay, I actually have a flawed amber that I can cut. All right, maybe we can actually make some jewelry now. That would be pretty cool. I was also able to find some gold. I actually have 128 gold ore. One single thing. It's the only node I've seen so far. I'm just curious. Wow, I can't even do anything with it yet. I was about to say, I'm curious like how much XP I get. Okay, what's the level for gold ore? All right, gold ingot requires smelter tier four. Okay. So it's not that I don't have the level for it. There's just not a proper smelter here. This is a tier three. I'm going too fast for the server, man. Oh my God. Look at the ring I just got from doing another Amrine. Yeah, I'll be friends with you, man. Um, Look at this. 17 strength. I don't even have a ring yet, dude. That is crazy strong, man. Imagine. Like, imagine if I had that. You deal 4% more slash damage. I use a sword. Oh yes, dude. Wow, guys. This was worth it. Look at this. That shit's crazy. I didn't even have a ring, man. Okay, let's see what we get. They just needed somebody for the last boss. I literally came in here, took all the supply stockpiles and beat the boss with them real quick and got something crazy good. Like, I will take it, dude. That is awesome. All right, we'll just get rid of all the garbage. 10 strength, 5 intelligence. You know, ugh, damn. It's more base damage. I lose dex. Do I need that dex right now to break 50? Yeah, I do. So I can't use that. I'm just going to get rid of it. All right, guys. Nice. Back to skilling. I'll quit taking breaks. I did it, guys. 
I got it. I just realized it. Ready for the logging festival. Collect 24,000 wood. Damn, what am I doing with my life? But the reward is I get a title. Master Lumberjack. Let's go ahead and do it. And by the way, oh yeah, where is it? Feeling crappy. Nope, that's not it. Master Lumberjack. Oh, what a title, man. Wonderful. And there we go. 50 mining, and now I can mine Blight Crag, Life Jewel, Shock Spire, and Earth Crag. I'm also over encumbered now, which sucks. I'm gonna have to go back to town. I'm good now, but uh, yeah, those are my skills so far. 54 smelting, 30 weaving, 59 harvesting, 113 logging, 103 woodworking. Bringing everything up. Jewel crafting just seems like crazy hard to level, by the way. Have no idea how that's supposed to go up. It, that Literally, it feels like what rune crafting is from RuneScape, but everything else, not too bad. Not too, too bad. It looks Looks like the people on my faction are actually trying to take Everfall right now, which would be super beneficial for me, and I really hope it happens. It's currently in conflict. I don't know when the war is going to be, but as soon as I find it out, uh, I'm actually going to participate in it because I really want Everfall to be green. I just realized this whole time, the hyssop I was collecting was for potions. I can make 188. I'm only actually limited by my water, and I can just easily go get more. Let's go ahead and just see what 188 health potions will get my arcana up to from five. Come on, please be a big drop. That's it? Oh my god. Level 13, I'll take it, but I was expecting way more. I also made some common health potions, which is nice. So, hey, at least we're leveling Arcana now. Look at this. I have so many pots, man. It's just, they're so bad. Maybe I can sell them to noobs. I don't know. Nope. Noobs don't even want this crap, man. 0 0.01? That's a penny. You can get a penny for a health pot right now. You might as well look at one gold as being one dollar, right? With the way they break it up with the decimals. It might as well just be pennies, dollars, quarters, and dimes at this point. So, one penny. So, I got a dollar eighty-eight. <laughs> Out of my freaking weak health pods, man. That sucks. I could have sold the hyssop for more. I mean, I guess I'll just use them. It's fine. It's better than nothing. Guess I'll be chugging little baby pods for a bit. Okay, guys, I got my hands on a roasted cabbage. 1,000 points of luck for 20 minutes while logging. I will take it. Let's do it, guys. Okay, so I've probably been cutting young and mature and weird wood trees for about three hours collectively today. Um, just not the only thing I've been doing, but, you know, at least three hours. And not only am I way lower than I thought I would be, which is 129. <laughs> okay, I don't know how. That that's all I've got. But, uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel the RuneScape-esque grind, and it's such a good feeling, because there just needs to be prestige, man. Really, what it all comes down to is the next balance patch, like, or the next patch in general. Like, I think we're all gonna look at that patch and make a decision. Is Amazon serious about this game or not? I'm- why would I skip this? No! It's already- god, geez. All right, didn't even matter. But yeah, like, is Amazon serious? Uh, or is this like a cash grab, which would suck so bad because of the potential it has. In fact, if Amazon fails this, I hope somebody just buys it if they can. Like, just buy the freaking models, buy the base game, buy it, and then just mod it. The way Project Ascension does and make it better. Uh, because, uh... The, the potential is limitless with the graphics, the setup, the the combat styles, the crafting. The potential is just so, so limitless, man. Looks like my weird wood trees respawned. Really? Okay, anyway. So yeah, I basically just go back and forth, like I said, between the shrine and down here to get my weird wood trees uh, to make it up for when they spawn. And I cut matures and youngs in between that. And I'm only keeping the weird wood planks right now, or weird wood logs, soon to be planks, hopefully, uh, due to the fact that that's really all I want. Like, I've just, I've got too much of the other one already in my banks, and they're so e There we go, level 130, 20 more to go. Uh, but yeah, they're so easy to get, talking about the young trees and the mature trees, that there's really no reason to care about them. That's why I'm just dropping everything but the weird wood it doesn't feel as plentiful obviously i mean you get a lot right like this is taking me a long time to cut this tree right now i just got 29 weird wood from it 552 xp that's four times as much xp and this is a baby version of the tree by the way four times more xp basically than a mature tree but about the same amount of logs but it also takes like three times as long to chop it down. Just throwing out a guess, but that's what it feels like. The Weirdwood tree logs are going to be used for higher level stuff. It's going to be used for furnishing. So that's why I'm prioritizing collecting it. Okay, guys, it's been years, but we're about to be 140 logging. 
It's taken a bit, and we still have 10 more levels to go. The grind is real, but there we go. Level 140. Expert lumberjack. Nice. Right now, I'm cutting down green wood so I can craft it into regular, like, timber, and then I'm using that to level up my furnishing skills, so it's actually been much faster than just, uh, purely going for the mature trees. <laughs> Okay, so apparently you can visit, like, the top homes. I don't really understand how you get a home rating, but apparently I'm top five, and I'll take it. Um, it looks like we're all pretty equal, and then there's this one crazy guy who has three times the points of everybody else and a crazy hairdo and mustache. I'm actually curious, like, what makes his house better? This is... Okay, so he has more stuff going on, that's fair. Like, he has some stuff going on up here. He has some stuff on his shelves, I can respect that. He has his dog on the bed, which is just like, it's respectable. He even has some stuff- oh, that's a good idea. To put some stuff outside, I might do that too. Ultimately, it's not that different, it's just less bare bones. Oh, he has some cool stuff on the walls too. That's very, very important. The one thing I'm missing is oil. Wow, he even has curtains. So let me show you guys my house right now. I have a chest now, right? So the chest adds extra storage and that's been huge. I have another one, but I'm actually gonna try selling it on the auction house. If it sells, I'll make upwards of three to 400 gold profits. And that might be a decent way to make some money because they're really difficult to do. Furnishing is not the easiest to level. I've got my dogs outside. I've got like a, like a stool. <laughs> it's just a stool outside, but otherwise it's the same. Uh, but you can just see like it's just like a little bit more filled in his house has like stuff all on the shelves and, and all that kind of stuff we need to do that for sure but yeah that is pretty cool i definitely want to be number one there we go guys 150 logging oh i'm so happy it's finally over there we go i can sleep but okay guys that is going to be the end of my episode two for the new world playthrough i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure to give it a like and to subscribe i won't set any lofty goals this time that way we can get the episode three out in a fairly decent time frame because the 150 logging made me keep pushing the date out for this video so anyway like i said if you enjoyed it like and subscribe i'll see you in the next one mcdoubles out